It's very unfortunate that much of the media has chosen a sectarian discourse to explain events in Iraq. Uh, on the contrary, uh, the people who are attacking Iraq are foreign missionaries, ISIS, and they have an ideology which is so extreme that even the Qaeda finds it abhorrent. The name, I don't know how accurate the name in English ISIS, but in, in, in Arabic it is Dawlat al-Islam fil Iraq wa Sham. It's the Islamic State in Iraq and Sham. Behind this cover of the Khilafah and the Islamic State, comes the violence, extreme violence, not only against Christians and minorities, also against the Sunni because they are, the, the origin of, of this group is a Sunni group. Uh, even those Sunni who are different uh, from themselves, they are also subject to torture and killing and marginalization. They have executed Sunni ulama who have refused to swear allegiance to them. So they are an extreme group operating in the name of Sunni Islam. And we must not allow this to happen. When they took control over Raqqa, for example, which is a, a city not far from the Iraqi border, they gave the Christians three options, either to become Muslims like them, or to pay al jizya, which is a religious tax, in gold, nothing no cash, only gold, or to be killed. So they don't. They didn't e even have the the opportunity or the option to leave. Ayatollah Sistani, plus other Sunni scholars from Iraq, such as Sheikh Al Kuwaisi, who have said Iraqis need to defend their country collectively against this terrorist threat and this is being portrayed by much of the media as a sectarian war. Yes, of course, we have to be careful that sectarian differences do not cause us uh, harm and, 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 and discord. Uh, differences are part of human nature. We must learn to respect our differences, to learn how to deal with them. We all have the same book, the same fasting, the same prayers, the same hajj, the same zakat. We may differ here and there, but that is not a reason for people to use that as a pretext for creating war, for politicians to create discord between us. It is really important that we maintain peace and order, and together we decouple Islam from any form of violence and extremism. I really don't know who is funding these people, but, but I know that the funding is not as, as simple as individual fundings and, and, and donations, definitely. There are countries and, and governments behind it. And we can't, I can't imagine that they, such an organization like ISIS to take the second largest city in, in Iraq in a short time without even a battle, they would be supported by a couple of individuals. So it's a bigger plan, it's a bigger um, complicated structure behind them that, that allowing the money to flow and the weapons to flow to them in order to take control. It's one of the most dangerous things I think we are seeing in our times, is the use of politics and geopolitics, uh, the use of religion by state actors, by regional powers, and I wouldn't exclude any of them uh, in this mess we are in. When we look at the context and, and the geopolitical scene in Syria and Iraq, we see that uh, there, there has been a, a plan, almost systematic plan, to destabilize the country, the, the bo both countries. And if we look at ISIS, how the, the circumstances about how they, they came to being, we see that they are not only organic in the sense of 
their members are not only Iraqis and, and Syrians. A lot, I mean thousands of, of uh, jihadists and fighters come from all over the world, including Europe and, and, uh, and the US and even from the Far East and up as far as Australia. So we, we have here a, an international evil force coming together in Iraq and in Syria to create even a bigger trouble for both countries to weaken them and to destroy the infrastructure and the social fabrics of these countries. Well, the fatwa by Ayatollah Sistani actually speaks about all Iraqi citizens, the need for them, able Iraqi citizens, for the need for them to protect the country through legal channels. It does not call for Shias to lift arms against Sunnis. This is not about Shia and Sunni fight. This is about a fight about defending uh, the country from the barbaric acts which it is facing today. If we look at the, uh, uh, at the conflict in, in Syria or in Iraq, there is a sectarian dimension without a doubt. But how did this sectarian dimension come to existence? Definitely, I do not believe that it came out of people who are rejecting each other because of Sunni, Shia, Christian, background. We have lived with each other for, for centuries and we know each other and we've, we've shared the geography and the culture. Why now? Why now that we can't cope with each other? We cannot coexist and share the resources and the freedom and the, uh, the common destiny actually we have. Uh, we have to understand that uh, if we look at how the West dealt with the, with, the, with the conflict, there is a lot of double standard in the West. For example, Al-Qaeda, everywhere in the world, they are terrorists, except in Syria. The, the West was ready to turn the blind eye just because they were fighting uh, the regime or the government in Syria. So this double standard is not because they want the best for us at all, because they want even to deepen this sectarian dimension and, and deepen our enmity to each other. We need, we must, it is imperative now more than ever to go beyond this sectarian division and even this religious diversity and differences to see that as in richness. I still cannot understand if the Sunni kills the Shia and the Shia kills the Sunni. How are we gaining out of all that a better future? Why would, why would the annihilation of one party enriches, enrich the other party? On the contrary, if Christianity is taken away from the Middle East, the Middle East is much poorer. If the Shia are taken away from the Middle East, the Middle East is much poorer. If the Sunni are taken, if the Alawites are taken, if the Duru's are taken, any, any component of, of this society is removed from this society. The society is weaker, poorer, and less coherent. I am, I am a Christian priest speaking in Ahlul Bayt Shia TV. Because, because they, sh they see that my presence is not a threat to Islam or to Shia. On the contrary, my presence is a, sim a symbol of unity, a symbol of, of uh, cooperation, solidarity. And this is what we, what we need to empower in the Middle East, this solidarity movements between the, the different factions and different uh, schools of thoughts and different religions in the area. This is our strength.